Hey guys, welcome back to Alternative Small Holding. We are here at the plot today. Not necessarily to do any work, but um, I need to get my head around a few things. Um, main reason I'm here is because where I'm standing next year will be a cut flower patch. And I'm starting to really give some thought as to what we're going to grow here. And I've already started to sow some seeds. But I wanted to do a series of videos of starting your own cut flower patch, just so I can see the progress over time, really. But um, all of this under the black tarp is going to be cut flowers. And you can probably tell from the puddles and the undulations that we haven't leveled this ground yet. This is where our first early potatoes were last year. And also underneath this end, Let's see what it's like now, but this was really badly infested with dandelions. Here you can see the roots have been bleached out down there. There's lots of bugs and slugs dare I say, underneath here. We're going to have that tarp off soon so that the ground can breathe and also so that the birds can come and get the slugs and we can start levelling it out. Now, the planning stage, this is really bright, let me turn around. The planning stage of a cut flower patch is always really, really exciting. Now for me, I struggle with making things non-uniform. As I've said in a previous video, I love that wild abundance look, but when it comes to it, I always put everything in rows. So I'm challenging myself to this, to plant the flowers in nice big clumps. Um, and I think it's going to look absolutely amazing. Thought I'd take a seat on this bench that we picked up. So what the reason for doing this is, is my gorgeous, gorgeous friend is getting married in August. And I have said that I will grow her a whole load of cut flowers, um, hopefully for her bouquets and buttonholes, but also for decorating the location and all that as well. And um, it's a challenge that, but well, it's not so much a challenge because my history before I actually started growing vegetables, the first foray into gardening, shall we say, was um, renovating a massive country cottage garden. So I think English country garden, the stereotypical style. That's what my first style of gardening was. So then I only really grew ornamentals. Um, I grew a lot of flowers. Sorry, it's um, school run time, so all the cars are zooming past. It wasn't the best time to come over, was it? But. Um, yeah, when I was doing that, I very quickly learned a lot about flowers and I learned about which ones are bomb-proof for slugs, because some are, um, and also which ones just get eaten straight away and are a complete waste of time. I also found a nemesis, which is gyp, gyp, um, gypsophilia, or, or baby's breath, um, which has been a request for this um, wedding, so that that is going to be a challenge. But. Um, I have always grown flowers every single year, be it at home or a few at the plot as well, um, but never for a cut flower patch. So I'm having to think about how I am going to grow these plants and what I'm going to grow. Now, the thing with cut flowers is you can just grow any flower, obviously, if you want to, but what we are looking for here is obviously seasonability. So they need to be ready in the start of August. They need to have a long life once cut. They need a long stem so that I can cut them and shorten them down if I want to. Um, they need to be in a colour scheme um, and they need to be a certain style of flower as well. And also we need different shapes and sizes. So I am compiling a list. I've already started sewing a few things, um, but when I have the final list pinned down, I'll do stage two video about how I'm sewing them and growing them. Um, but that bed, that for now is just going to be asleep for a couple more weeks and um, when we do take that plastic up we won't be amending the soil in any way. That is because a lot of flowers don't actually like um, very rich soils such as something that's been amended with manure which will encourage a lot of leafy growth but not so much fruit growth or flower growth. I'm thinking about tomatoes. I've got tomatoes on the brain guys. And we will also be sowing some wildflowers, and wildflowers generally like poor soil, so 
those that require a bit more nutrients will get some compost other than that this plane is just circling overhead and trolling me i swear <laughs> um but there'll be different patches that need different attention and i'm really looking forward to doing it now in terms of colour wise we need um whites pale yellows peaches kind of nice simple paired back colours and um we're actually going to be growing a lot of fever few because in fact i've got some here now i moved some of these fever few plants because they were in the way and um i found absolutely loads of them self-seeded all over the plot and they produce these gorgeous little daisy flowers in like nice big clump heads and also they've got a nice like herbal kind of scent to them so i've planted some of them underneath our apple trees over there and um i'm going to plant some more dotted around and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use this now this cut flower idea as um, a way to bring in that like overflowing abundance look that I wanted on the plot that I mentioned in the last video and as well as having the cut flower actual section there'll be flowers like all over the place and um, I think it's gonna look rather pretty guys as well as looking pretty and being functional for the wedding obviously it's going to bring in a lot more pollinators and um, we can never have too many of those can we but um, I'll show you what we've been doing underneath the apple trees first because that's where one of the big changes is taking place. So this is our red currant bush. Oh, I'm tripping over. Um, and this was this hole here and this hole here was another currant bush. That currant bush is still to come out. That apple tree needs digging out. And then we've got two more apple trees there. This whole thing was covered in weed membrane from one end to the other. And what I found is if we were sitting at the bottom of the plot and looking up, then there'd just be this bare patch here obviously we'd have the trees but because there was nothing growing underneath them it just felt really like bare and not very attractive to be honest so i've taken up all the weed membrane down this end here where the little tree is underneath there i planted a bed of fever few which i know will sell seeds and everything but it's so easy to manage i'm not worried about that and then along Underneath the trees, I'm actually going to plant a whole load of nasturtiums. I honestly think that nasturtiums are going to be one of my new obsessions this year, along with tomatoes. <laughs> um, I'm hunting down loads and loads of different varieties because I want to use them as ground cover. Um, by using them as ground cover, it will suppress weeds, which we did amongst the Amish paste tomatoes last year, and it worked really, really well. And it also stops soil evaporation should we ever get a hot summer. But you know, we've got to prepare in case we do, don't we? Um, the flowers and the leaves are obviously edible, so that's a bonus. They make lovely cut flowers. I want to make some kind of chandeliers with some very pale, um, white, milky, yellow ones. And um, so, like lampshade frames with trailing nasturtiums on them. I think that look lovely. Um, and if my bride to be doesn't want them, I'll have them for myself. Um, <laughs> But also, obviously, the pollinators love them and they detract the brassica butterfly, the white cabbage butterfly. They can um, distract them away from your brassicas. So if we've got a plot full of them, you know, hopefully that'll save some of my brassicas this year. Oh, and I also obviously want to use them to make nasturtium jelly. I'm thinking if we've got some of those really dark red velvet ones, um, I can make some nasturtium jelly with those and see what colour that comes out. But I'm also growing some like normal orange ones and yellow and some bright pink ones. And I want to have a row of different types of nasturtium jelly in different colours. And because we're going to have so many of them, I'm going to make nasturtium flower wine, I think because the jelly tastes gorgeous. It just tastes of honey and sunshine. So I'm thinking if that's what the jelly tastes like, wine is going to taste good. So we'll be doing that this year. So underneath the apple trees is going to be flowers. At the end, I've got some perennial tall sunflowers to plant and there'll be other bits and bobs going in there too. Um, dotted around everywhere, we will have all sorts of little flowers. We love our staple calendulas and everything of that kind, which I use the petals of to make salves, which worked really well this year. I really enjoyed making those. And um, I think it's just going to look great. The nasturtiums are going to be kept separate so that I can save the seeds, and I know that that's that type of seed. But um, that overflow and abundance look is just going to be amazing this year so amazing so in here i've just brought over my onions because they were on our um windowsill at home and 
they are going in the greenhouse now. Um, I've also got some root balls which are starting to sprout of um, my big perennial sunflower plant. Pigeon just nearly flew into my head. So this plant is a bit of a bully. It does like to take over, um, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put it in places where it can actually thrive. And because it's so tall, it'll add some lovely color. Um, so I'm going to get two of those in. I've got some more at home and I've got some more perennial plants at home to bring over. Uh, so they'll be a nice yellow. I'm growing our traditional sunflowers, but the dwarf variety, which make lovely like hand bouquet kind of size or nice vase cut flowers. Um, there will be lots of Ami Majors and Robert, um, Rabina Bonariensis. I said it. I never said that. Um, I can't remember the list. But as I said, I'm not telling you everything in this video anyway, so it's not, it's not important that I tell you the full list. But I'm going to have a meeting with Bride to Be next week and we're going to go through everything and um, I'm really, really looking forward to getting back into growing ornamental seriously this year. And also, gosh, I can't wait to grow more dahlias. Dahlias. I've been drooling over them online. It's definitely, I mean, it's, it's coming up to mid-February now. It isn't particularly cold still, um, hence why we've still got so many slugs. Um, but I've got that itch, you know, that like, it's nearly spring. I can't wait to get out. Um, I started sowing some more seeds. I've done some um, aubergines. I'm going to try them for one more time. Just one. Um, if they don't work this year, that's it. I'm not trying them again. And um, I've done some more flowers. I've done my Cleome. Hello, Missy. Hello. Hello. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Um, and what else have I sown? I've got some cauliflowers and kale in here. Let me show you. Can I just, can I? Yeah. I'm free. So I've got the first lot of cauliflower and the first lot of scarlet kale. I actually need to sow a lot more, but I'm going to stagger them um, slightly so that I don't have them all in one go. This chair out the way. Um, I've just watered these, so some of them are looking a bit fully over. But um, the patch oil looking okay. The leeks, the second sowing, are starting to come up. And the other ones are doing okay. Um, these salad leaves are so nice. They're like um, oriental mustard leaf or oh, just pull the whole thing up they've got a really unique flavor so good um i think they're mizuna and um i think you're supposed to have them in stir fries and all that as well but i can't stop eating them it's like my own personal grazing patch when i come to the plot the radishes are starting to do their radishy thing you can see they're starting to bulb up they're looking really healthy i'm really pleased with how this um having these in here over winter is going actually and i think i'm actually feeling much less overwhelmed or stressed about starting everything this year because i've got the greenhouse that i can bring things over to whereas previous years i've had to do the you know like the sliding games you've got one free space and you have to keep moving everything around your house and lean to and everything so um having this has taken the pressure off a bit so that's good. <sighs> yeah. This was supposed to be just a cut flower patch update, but um, I'm just giving you a little random update on all our seeds as well. So, yeah. Not much happening today. I just need to sit here and get my head around everything. I want it to be spectacular. I need to account for having a lot more flowers than I need just in case of bad weather or bugs or I myself cutting some maybe <laughs> or things just not being open in time so um if anybody has any recommendations for any cut flowers in say the um like pale yellow white cream peach um kind of color spectrum that will be ready at the start of august then please do let me know i'm focusing more on annuals at the moment although i am serving some perennials that flower in their first year um yeah so that's it for now. I'm here thinking about, hey monkey, thinking about, thinking about growing flowers for 2020. And um, I've got another update coming soon all about tomatoes. 
I've been spending a lot of time talking about tomatoes, mm. haven't I? Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of list making and tearing that list up and starting another list. Um, and I've got some exciting news to share you, um, share with you, which I hope to actually film on Saturday or Sunday um, about our tomato plans for 2020. And if you want to know, like, I mean, I want to do a tomato update video, but if you actually want me to sit down and tell you every single tomato I'm growing and what kind of tomato it is, then um, let me know. So I know if to do like a full in-depth video or to just like skim over the surface of the ones I'm really looking forward to. So, yeah. Soon it will be spring. What was it, six weeks? 20, 21st of March. And then um, it's all go, isn't it? Okay, right, I'm going to wander around and plan in my head about growing flowers and how everything is going to look so beautiful in summer. Because it will, even at this time of year I feel, you know, summer's never going to come, winter's going to last forever, especially we haven't really had a winter yet. Um, I know that the worst is still to come, but um, it will soon be here and soon we will be harvesting all of our favourite crops and cutting flowers. So, thanks for watching, see you soon. Bye-bye.